the Philippines win against New Zealand, this topic came up for many people. How many players on the Philippines team is American born? Turns out 18 of the 22 players are American born. And with the topic coming up, let's chat about being American born and representing your country or the country that your parents are from. Jenny, I want to ask you this. Yeah, let's turn the table. You are U.S. born and you represented the Mexican national team. Why did you come to that decision? Uh, it's interesting because everyone's reasoning is different. Everyone's situation is very different. Uh, for me, I grew up along the border. The U.S. and Mexico, El Paso, Texas is literally on the border. Um, so I grew up in both worlds. Um, but my personal decision had to do with the fact that, you know, I was getting the captaincy for Mexico. They were rolling out the red carpet for me and saying, we will build this team around you. Um, with the U.S., I was within the pool and there were hundreds of girls and they were getting changed all the time and there was no consistency in, yes, you're one day gonna play in a World Cup for the United States. And Mexico was like, we are willing to build a team around you, make you the captain, do all these things. And that was my personal experience and that was a no-brainer. And for my mom, it meant so much when we finally decided like, are we gonna keep on this struggle of trying to be here or decide, to build with Mexico and like to understand, you know, what they were putting in front of me. So for me, it was a no brainer, but also it gave me the opportunity to explore that part of my identity so much more. You know, I, I'm saying I grew up half and half um, with the US and Mexico, but being a part of the national team there gave me insight into the culture of all these different women from different parts, from different socioeconomic places that you wouldn't have gotten in just living there with my family or just going to see XYZ. So, I personally had my own reasoning and, and I loved it. I, I'm so proud of having represented and we see yeah. that, you know, in the top, top six teams, there are I think 50 players that are American born in cool. this World Cup mm -hmm. playing for different national teams. Yeah. I, I think it's an aspect of it, as you kind of alluded to in that, that it's really tough to get into the United States yeah. national team. So hard. And the pool through youth teams is really tough. The competition really is incredibly steep and sometimes it gives an opportunity for other players to um, maybe gain nationality with other nations uh, as it happens sometimes a little bit more recently when you'll get Ireland a few of those players just recently gained their nationality and then it gives them an opportunity to play at the international yeah. level in a world stage. It also just shows you what America is, what the United yeah. States is. Yeah. It, it's a place where people want to come live and start a new life sometimes and they can do that and, and love living in America while also still celebrating where they came from and I love that about this that these players, some of them have had a real good connection with their roots, but some of them are regaining that connection yes. or learning more about it. I know the Philippines players talked about just the the culture of the Filipino people and how they would come to all these different places they played and greet them with food and massages and just treat them with such love. And I think it allows you to not only be proud of where you grew up and say, this soccer system within the United States is producing a lot of good players and there's not enough spots. There's only 23 spots to represent the United States. So there's opportunities all around the world that these players then have the ability to go and do what they love for a different nation. Yeah, it's also a reflection of this is the world sport. This is yeah. why soccer connects the entire planet and it's, it just creates so much love and joy around kicking a ball around a soccer field and to be able to represent, I don't know, how many different countries and really show your culture in so many different ways is incredible mm -hmm. and very important. Oh, it's such a reminder of what a melting pot this country is. And mm -hmm. I think you said it beautifully, Jordan. It allows people in their different experiences to explore that culture or re-explore that culture and get closer to it. And I find it to be the most beautiful part of this um, whole experience and watching all these different cultures come together in a World Cup, that is literally the, the best thing about so it. So do you root for Mexico and the United States? I do. Yeah. Uh, if they're playing I, I against think, each other, I think I, they pro these, a lot of these players with, probably do. Playing against each if other. they're playing against each other, I root for Mexico because yeah. I wore nice. the crest and, yeah. okay, and that yeah. holds that a certain sense. power, a certain for sure. a weight, yeah. pride that I have <laughs> to hold on to. But I will always root for the United States. I mean, I had some people very upset with me when I wore the U.S. kit and they were like, but you played for Mexico. I'm like, I also yeah. root for the United States. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, why on. is there some confusion there? <laughs> but, but Jordan, one of the things that has come up is why is this more common in women's soccer than men's soccer, potentially? 
I think just in general, men's soccer around the world is, has been a lot more established mm -hmm. for a long time. Just think about all the other teams that the United States now have players coming from. They have players coming from England. They have players coming from Germany who are American playing for the, the U.S. team now. Where I think for the, the women, they set the standard. The, the women in the United sta mm -hmm. States set the standard as to this is how we should treat our teams. So now as we build beyond and soccer for women becomes more accessible across Across the world and we see our first World Cup with 32 teams you're gonna see this a little bit more often because there are just a, a bunch of people who've been playing the sport as we all did since a very young age here in, in, in the US with experience from youth through professional Lisa I know that there's a player American born or came into the college system that you wanted to point out yeah, um, I think there's so many that we can talk about. We saw mm -hmm. the graphic of all the different players, but I want to give a shout out to um, Irish player forward Marissa Shiva. She played collegiately at Penn State. She's a Philly gal, so I had oh, to give her some love. Okay. Grew up in Sellersville, um, a dual athlete at Penn State. Uh, she played track and field. She ran the 1500, the 1000, the 800. She's got records in those, and she also played. Jeez. She was a midfielder at Penn State, so the girl can run. She knows that. <laughs> she recently joined the Republican Republic of Ireland national team in February of 2023. She got two starts against the United States in April. She started Ireland's first game. Mm -hmm. She's been a big part of this team and she's worked her way into it. You can catch her on the wings. Left or right, she floats around, but she's been impressive to watch. Darren, you have a player you want to point out as well. I do. I'm going to go with the Philippines. I'm just, I'm loving seeing that they got their first win and the heart behind everything that yeah. went into it. I'm going to talk about Tanai Anis. Um, she went, she's from Ohio. She went to the University of Florida. She's the captain for the Philippines. She's the attacking mid and she's been such a leader and such a consistent force to be reckoned with with the Philippines. And she's been through the highs and the lows and this high that coming to this World Cup. I heard her speak about how when they first qualified, only three players on the Filipino national team were playing professionally, and now there's 17. Wow. Yes. So many more to come. Wow. And yeah, there's more to come. She's for been sure. there for that journey from the start, and I'm super happy for her to see this come to fruition. Yeah. Jordan. I'm going to go Riley Tanner. She played in the SEC at Alabama under Wes Hart, who was a professional himself, played in MLS. So I, I think that there was no shock that he was able to develop this player to a place where she got drafted into NWSL, is now playing for the Washington Spirit with... Marissa Shiva, Shiva. <laughs> and she's a player who is just, just counts on herself in 1v1 situations. I love mm -hmm. to see her on the dribble. Uh, she's playing for Panama, and it, it's just fun to see all these different players that we've seen in various ways um, being around the game, getting to represent uh, their national team. Uh, it, it, it's fun, and it mm -hmm. gives you another player to cheer for. Absolutely, and it's interesting how, how every player has a different role in the different environment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what certain players' uh, role is on the Washington Spirit may be different than it is with the national team, and that's yep. so beautiful to see how everyone kind of shifts there.